Is this bright? Can anybody tell me? Is this too bright? Hey everyone, welcome to Greg Morton Outdoors. About a few weeks ago, I got tagged by Signal Outdoors to give my five tips for beginning backpackers. Uh, let me just say, my five tips aren't going to be like any other person's that you've probably ever heard before. So stick around and we'll get started. So number one is save money where you can, but spend money where you should. What do I mean by that? Well, you don't need a $600 tent, a $400 sleeping bag, and a $300 backpack to go backpacking. You can start for a lot less. There are so many places that you can get things at a discount price, or there's companies out there that produce some really good gear at a low cost. So some of the places that I've picked up stuff from that are kind of not your typical outdoor gear places, take a look at pawn shops. I actually got a pocket rocket to there uh, at a pawn shop for $20. Uh, take a look at Goodwill. I live in Colorado Springs, so around here we've got uh, some outdoor gear consignment shops. You can find some really good buys there. And just because something's got a big brand name doesn't necessarily mean that it's a really good product. So don't get fooled by the big name. It might say North Face or Kelty or something like that. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a really good product. One of my favorite companies is Perea Outdoor Products. They are located up in Denver. But what they make are fantastic things at a pretty decent price. And not only that, they have got outstanding customer service, but they also have a lifetime warranty on what they make. Uh, chances are you're not going to find that with some of these other big name uh, brands. So what do I mean by spend money where you should? Well, there's some things that you should really drop some cash on if you want to start to get into backpacking. Just one of those things that you should spend money on, a good pair of shoes. You know, if you're backpacking, if your feet go, if your legs get fatigued, you're done. And the wrong set of shoes really can cause some serious damage. So drop a little bit of money, get a good pair of shoes, and that way you'll enjoy your backpacking trip even more. Where else can you save some money? Well, that brings me to my second topic, and that is discount stores are your friends. Don't be afraid to go to discount stores, like the Everything's a Dollar store, or around here we've got Dollar Tree, which everything in there is a dollar. So to get your backpacking kit together, you're going to need to do th some things like put together a medical kit. You're going to need to get some food and things like that. Check out some of these dollar stores. So they've got like single serving versions of uh, Advil and Tylenol. You can get your travel toothbrush there. They've got Ziploc bags and they've got all different types of food. Anywhere from ramen to nor rice sides. They've got... Uh, Slim Jims, you know, snacks, Snickers bars, all of that. So there's no reason to go broke putting all this together when you can go to some place like the Dollar Tree or Everything's a Dollar and save a lot of money while you're doing it. Also, at the same time, don't be afraid to go to Walmart and check out things in their camping department. Uh, you can pick up like your long handle spoon there, maybe a cook kick. Uh, you can get your uh, Sawyer Squeeze, you know, water, purif uh, water purification stuff, and you can do it and save a lot of cash versus going to an outdoor store and buying a titanium this and, a, you, know, you know, a high-end product. Uh, you know, that also includes if you want to take a camping chair with you, uh, which I did do a review on this, and I'll put the link up above. Uh, this, you know, it's under two pounds which that's about the same as the Helinox Chair 1. The big difference is that Chair 1 is going to run about $100. This, with tax, was 32 So you can buy one for yourself, one for your neighbor, one for your sister's boyfriend's cousin's uncle, 
whatever you want to do. And it'll still be less money than if you buy just one of those Helinox chairs. So you've got your gear, you've loaded up your food, you put together your medical kit and everything, and you're looking at your backpack and you're going, wow, this is kind of heavy. How can I carry this for several days for 10 to 15 miles per day? That brings me to number three, and that is more time in the gym equals better time on the trail. Listen, you might be a great long distance runner. You might be able to do 10 miles and, and knock that out in an hour, and that's fantastic. But hiking is almost as if you're using a different set of muscles, and it's also a full body workout. So not only you've got your legs because you're gonna be walking, but you've got your back because you've got your pack on there and you're using your core to keep yourself upright and you're using your chest muscles as you're using your trekking poles and your shoulders and your biceps and your triceps, everything is involved. So if you wanna have a better time while you're out on the trail, put a little time into your muscular strength and conditioning. It'll just make it easier and more enjoyable when you're out there hiking. Now, do you have to go out and spend a bunch of money and buy a bunch of equipment? No. I mean, you can start going to a gym and, you know, lift some weights there. Uh, you can do something like P90X at home. You can use a TRX or something like that for a body weight resistance trainer. Or, you know, yoga is a great option too. And if you've got, you know, like on-demand TV, there's a lot of times they've got free yoga programs right on TV. So you've got your pack, you've got it all figured out, you've got everything filled in there, you got your food and everything else, you worked out a bit. Now what are you gonna do? Well, that brings me to my tip number four, and that is take care of your body. Okay, Greg, what do you mean by take care of your body? I mean, if you have any aches, pains, injuries, don't try and push through it. Address it immediately and, and see the proper person to get it taken care of. You don't want to do anything that's going to cause a permanent injury and turn you off from backpacking altogether. You can also do other things that are more preventive medicine. Like myself personally, I go to a chiropractor once a week. And if it weren't for my chiropractor, I probably would not be able to do 90% of the stuff that I'm doing now. So it might be a chiropractor, it might be massage therapy, it might be acupuncture, it might be lap dances. Whatever works for you to help you take care of your body, do it. And I hate to sound like the old guy lecturing, but I will for a minute. Listen, when I was in my 20s, I didn't even pay attention to any of that, and I really wish I would have. So, you know, maybe getting an adjustment for your spine, you know, a few times a week might be what does the trick. That might be what gives you a better time when you're out on the trail. That might be what allows you to recover quickly. Uh, so don't discount it, but take care of your body. So that brings me to my last point, number five. And that is before you do anything, before you buy a single piece of gear, before you go out on a hike. Research, 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 research. So hey, before you buy anything, I mean, even if you're just, you're going to go out and buy a cook pot, do some research first. Uh, look on YouTube, you know, Google it, find some reviews, find out what's going to be the best for you within your price range. You know, that you might not have to buy a titanium cook pot. Maybe, you know, one of the, uh, the, the steel or aluminum ones will work for you for exactly what fits within your budget and what fits within your needs. So do research on all of that. And I'm going to put some links below for people who I think do really good gear reviews. Uh, and please go ahead and, and check them out. Uh, and you know what? If you have questions about different pieces of gear, you know, you can put that comment below too, and I'll, I'll definitely answer them. And there's other people within our community here and the hiking community uh, that will, will chime in as well and give their, their two cents on a piece of gear. 
you know, just remember when you're buying your gear, don't get suckered in by a big name. Uh, I've seen some other people do, do some uh, gear reviews. Uh, Restless Wanderer, and I'll put his link below, <laughs> did a complete loadout for like 200 bucks. Uh, are they a bunch of big name items? Is there big Agnes in there? No, there isn't. Okay, there's no Z packs, there's no, you know, uh, Arcteric and stuff like that. But he was able to do a beginning loadout for 200 bucks. And before you go out on a hike, whether it's a day hike or a multi day hike, do some research on that. Uh, all trails is a great resource to use. Uh, Colorado has another one called CO Trex. Uh, there's Gut Hook, there's Gaia. There's a bunch of different resources out there or you can just Google the trail and chances are somebody's got some sort of information on it. But find out what fits within your abilities and your time frame. So not only look at the difficulty of where you're going but also take a look at the length and the time that you have available. So for a seasoned hiker, you know, a, an overnight trip that's a 30-mile hike might be doable. For somebody who's just starting out, maybe not. Maybe you should do like maybe 10 miles per day or even less than that. Whatever fits within your abilities. Uh, you know, it's up to you. This is your adventure. It's nobody else's. So you know what? If you're hiking five miles a day, then hike five miles a day. There's no stopwatch, nobody's timing you, it's all up to you. And it's all about you enjoying the adventure. Remember, it's not a race to the finish line. It's everything that's in between that really, really matters. So enjoy the entire hike. So there we go, there's my five tips. And, and I'm gonna give you just a couple more here. One, if you wanna record what you're doing, and either do your own YouTube channel or just to have videos for yourself. You don't need to run out and spend thousands of dollars on some mirrorless camera because you saw some big name hiker and that's what they use. Trust me, you can use your, your, your phone, you know, especially if you've got like one of the newer iPhones or one of the newer Samsungs, the lenses on there are, are fantastic. Uh, get to know your equipment and just use that instead. Uh, and another piece that, uh, this is something I learned when I was in the Army, you know, when we're going on our lo long road marches, I found that, you know, when you're, you're moving, your hands are swinging, it's forcing the blood down in there and it causes your hands to swell. So here's the tip. Take any rings off ahead of time. Because if you're out there hiking for several miles and your hands start to swell, you might not be able to get it off and it could turn out to be really painful with it swelling up. So take it off, put it someplace where you can secure it and it's not going to get lost. Trust me, you're not going to ruin your marriage if you take your ring off. Uh, and also, you know, you can go out and you can get one of those silicone rings uh, and they run from anywhere from like 10 to $25 depending on the brand. Uh, and you can wear that instead. So, hey, folks, that does it for me here. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you didn't enjoy the video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you find me annoying, give me a thumbs up. Or give me a thumbs down, whatever you want to do. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And hit the bell so you, you, know, you get notified when I put out new content. Uh, please comment below if you, if you want to, you know, if you have questions about gear, about trails, uh, like I said, we have got a great cooperative community with, within all the hikers out there. So, you know, feel free, just have at it, you know, and just remember there are no dumb questions. So I guess that's about it for me. So I think it's time to, uh, have my nightcap. And we'll talk to you soon. Is anybody in there? Hello?